From KGW, this is The Good Stuff. The message that I want people to get from these flowers is the importance of the environment that we are preserving right now and also understand that we as youth can really take the initiative. Tonight on The Good Stuff, yesterday was Earth Day. People from across the community gathered to celebrate our planet, including a group of students. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dieter Johnson. A group of teens in the Beaverton School District are making sure they leave a lasting legacy for future generations one stitch at a time. KGW's Christine Pitawanich shows us more. So here we have our classic rose, um, and then we have a tulip, uh, a mini rose, a poppy. Sarah Begg, a junior at Westview High School in Beaverton, is crocheting for a cause alongside her classmates. I wanted to start a project with Sarah. We were really passionate about sustainability and climate change. It was just like two of us at first, and then Anna joined in. So I saw Sarah and Yolani talking about it, and I was like, oh, this seems really interesting. It was a couple years ago that Sarah and her friends, Yalini Goboswamy and Anna Rajesh, decided to start Envy Crochet. Envy as an environment. After that, things happened fast. We talked to our business teachers, we came up with pricing, marketing. They decided to sell these crocheted flowers and donate proceeds to the nonprofit One Tree Planted. And for every dollar we donate to them, they plant a tree. Um, yeah, at first we started by setting a goal of planting 1,000 trees by the end of the year. We did pass our goal of 1,000 trees. So far, there are up to 2,000 trees planted. We have a team of 20, we have so much support from our community, and it's just incredible to see everyone coming together. And now their goal is to sell enough by Mother's Day to plant 1,000 more trees. Usually I do 10 stitches per flower. One stitch at a time, these teens are committed to creating a better world. Yeah, I feel like really satisfied because I'm able to take like something I like doing to, you know, help the world <laughs> and make it another place. The message that I want people to get from these flowers is the importance of the environment that we are preserving right now and also understand that we as youth can really take the initiative. We want them to be able to live in a world where it's, it's green, it's uh, sustainable. Hoping to make an impact, inspire others to do the same and leave this place better than we found it. So cool they can stitch like that. Well, through the nonprofit One Tree Planted, the teens say they can choose where they want their trees planted. They've already planted trees in over 25 countries, including Brazil, Mexico, and India. For more info on how you can help, head to nvcrochet.org. Well, several community groups took advantage of the weekend and the nice weather to hold an Earth Day street festival and fundraiser. It's a partnership between the Portland Fruit Tree Project and the Levin Community Center. The festival featured plant sales, local vendors, prizes, and educational activities for children. Organizers say the event promotes climate justice and the community. I think the most important thing about today, in addition to celebrating joy, is just celebrating partnership. There are so many different really great organizations here today, and we're all trying to make the world a little bit better in our unique ways. It all starts with a relationship, and it's so wonderful to meet people and connect and laugh and be together. This was the second year for the Earth Day Street Festival. A local coffee chain is investing in downtown Portland while cleaning up the community along the way. You may have heard of Stump Town Coffee Roasters. They have locations around the city and opened a new coffee house this weekend in the West End. It's their way of thanking the community for sticking with them through the pandemic. Sydney Dorner has more. Every downtown in the country has experienced safety concerns as well, um, but that isn't stopping us from continuing to commit. Stumptown Coffee is showcasing their devotion to downtown Portland, opening up a new shop at Southwest 11th Avenue and Washington Street. They aren't strangers to the area, with the location on Southwest 3rd Avenue since 2003. We have stuck it out through COVID and beyond, and you know we really believe in this city coming back, and so that's why when it was time to pick our newest location, we decided we were going to stick with downtown Portland. The coffee company held many events this week to celebrate the grand opening, teaming up with Solve, an environmental nonprofit, to host a cleanup, inviting Portlanders to pick up trash from their Southwest 3rd Avenue Cafe to their new location in the 11W building. 
and a lot of us were are just happy to get out and kind of invest our time back into the community and try to clean up the neighborhoods around us. Volunteers say they are noticing a slow turnaround for downtown Portland. Excited to see the area not just cleaner, but on the path to revitalization. So we're really starting to have a variety of resources, businesses, multifamily environments in this neighborhood. And it's so great to see all the growth happening and taking place. Sydney Dorner, KGW News. Well, there were so many amazing events celebrating our great planet. So now we want to know what you love about the planet. So in honor of Earth Day yesterday, we asked you to share your favorite photos of nature and you delivered. We'll start with this pic sent in by Sadie. Look at that beautiful shot of Mount Hood through the trees, taken of course in the Hood River area. From massive mountains to little creatures, Cameron sent in this little guy chilling on a branch at Kelly Point. Look at that, so cool. Well, Melvin sent in this photo they took from the Black Pearl on the Columbia Event Center. I love the colors on those clouds and look at the sun setting, amazing. Well, check out this picture from up above. This was taken floating in a Portland Rose balloon near the Wooden Shoe Tulip Farm. What a cool shot. And Alan sent in this picture of a beautiful purple camera Miss Lily. Ooh, that is really pretty. So Simpsons Park is going to look gorgeous with all those in bloom. And finally, Ron sent in this landscape of Mount Hood in the sunset. Look at all those colors. I just love the way the pink sky is mixed with the green trees and those orange bushes. I mean, just looks like amazing and a gorgeous day. So you can share your photos and stories of the good stuff happening in your community by texting us at 503-226-5088 or email us at thegoodstuff at kgw.com. A farm in Yam Hill County that helps people recover from addiction is now trying beekeeping. Master beekeepers put in beehives at the Blanchett Farm. They're hoping the therapeutic benefits of the bees and learning to care for them helps those in the recovery program. Beekeepers say bees can promote mental wellness and a deeper connection with nature. And talk about one busy beaver, Philbert, also known as the branch manager at the Oregon Zoo, of course, turned 13 last Friday. Can you believe he's already a teenager? So the zoo shared some video of Philbert living his best life. Well, enjoy those treats and happy birthday, Philbert. Coming up on The Good Stuff, we've got another edition of Grant's Getaways. Explore the old ghost towns of Oregon's high desert. But first, we have a look with Timberline Lodge. Check out this scam cam and look at the beautiful landscape. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Our next story takes us through the Oregon back roads just east of Mount Hood to explore the high desert's forgotten ghost towns. And as Grant McComey found, there's a unique history to the area. Take a look. Across North Central Oregon, distances are great and people are few. But days gone by are easy to find. Places like Friend, Oregon and Wasco County, where the history reaches back over a century. Oregon history buff Robert Waldron says the Friend School, built in 1909, offers a sneak peek to the promises of the Oregon country. What brought people here in the 1800s? Oh, the land. I think for a lot of folks, it was just the opportunity to start a new life. That solitude, again, it's not for everybody, obviously, or everybody would be out here, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, look around. He's right. This is gorgeous country, especially in spring, on a short drive to reach an Oregon State Park that is prime right now. White River Falls plunges over a basalt shelf near a sprawling greenway, where a day-use site with picnic tables opens each spring. You can explore the rugged quarter-mile trail that takes you riverside. And don't forget a camera. These are powerful moments. The falls drop more than 90 feet in dramatic fashion. Soon, the roadway calls you back, where you might consider a longer stay in nearby Dufer, Oregon, a small burg that hangs on to its history. Dufer's past reaches back to the 1870s, when it held the largest dryland apple orchard in the country. The town thrived thanks to the Southern Pacific Railroad that linked passengers and goods to the Dalles in the Columbia River. When you step inside the historic Balch Hotel in Dufer, you will feel right at home, and a sense that time hasn't changed much at all. Oh my gosh, you get to unplug. There's no TV or phone. It's more like a bed and breakfast type of a place connect with people and have an experience. It's great, there are no distractions. The Balch Hotel, listed on the National Historic Registry, has been completely renovated and offers 18 spacious and comfortable rooms with views to the stunning eastern side of Mount Hood. It's close enough to the Dalles and to Portland metropolitan area. The weather's beautiful out here. It's a region with unique connections to Oregon's past and holds the promise of fresh beginnings. So hurry here soon and then slow down. In Wasco County, with photographer Jeff Kastner, Grant McComey, KGW. Love those views. Well, be sure to watch our half hour program of Grant's Getaways. The show airs this Saturday and Sunday on KGW. Check this out, it's the final event of Cause Week at Rex Putnam High School. It's their haircuts for a cause. Students voted on which staff member would get their head shaved or haircut really short. The votes came in the form of donations for Doran Becker's Children's Hospital. A senior at the school is fighting a rare form of cancer, so the school wanted to show their support. The students thought one staff member would go through the challenge, but all 17 staff members stepped forward to cut off their hair. Absolutely amazing. Well, the festivities also ended with a carnival Friday evening. What a great spirit week. Next, the newest additions to TriMet's fleet of vehicles. They may be more pricey, but see why the company says it's worth it.
The future is electric. That's exactly what TriMet is saying about the expansion of their battery electric fleet. TriMet celebrated Earth Day by adding more electric buses. The electric buses cost more than the diesel versions, but TriMet says it's worth it to help the environment. TriMet is introducing the next generation of electric buses. In fact, it's tripling the number of e-buses in service. These are the first of 24 battery electric buses that we are just putting into service this year. These are going to be joining 10 battery electric buses that we already have in service. The buses are zero emissions and powered by renewable energy. So they're not contributing uh, in any way to the greenhouse or gas emissions. Uh, so on this Earth Day, this is a really great uh, example of just how TriMet is improving our environmental quality and living out our commitment to sustainability in the region. The new buses also have extended battery charge capacity and flexible charging capabilities. We estimate that these buses will be able to get at least 150 miles on a single charge. That makes them suitable for more of our routes. It's all part of TriMet's long-term plan to be more green. Our goal is to actually convert to a 100% zero emissions bus fleet by 2040. That's part of our overall goal to be completely net carbon neutral by 2050. Besides being better for the environment, TriMet also wants to help those in the community. Once ready to go into service, TriMet will place the buses where they are needed the most. Parts of the uh, city and parts of the region uh, that have lower than average air quality or that have historically marginalized populations. So we are prioritizing and deploying these buses where they will have the greatest impact. Right now, TriMet is conducting some testing and training on the new battery electric buses. The buses should go into service by late spring. On sunny days and nice days, uh, days at the beginning of the school year and the end of the school year, we'll, we'll get 150 kids. That's, and that, Abernathy is a total enrollment where it's 230. So we're having a most kids riding on the bike bus. In Southeast Portland, more than 100 Abernethy Elementary students celebrated Earth Day by using a little pedal power to get to school. They call it the bike bus. It's a safe, supervised way to get to school while having a little fun on the way. They do this every Wednesday morning, rain, wind, or shine. So cool. After the break, a sneak peek at this year's TEDx conference. One speaker's powerful message turns into a movement. And before we take you to break, though, here's a live look. Look at the sun setting at the Dalles.
a Portland bar made famous for only showing women's sports, is trying to expand. The sports bra first opened in Northeast Portland in 2022. Thanks to a new investment, it's planning to open locations in other cities. Alexis Ohanian is helping to fund the effort through his 776 Foundation. He's the co-founder of Reddit and the husband of tennis legend Serena Williams. They also plan to reinvest into girls and women's sports. It comes as women's sports grow in popularity. This year, the Women's College Basketball Championship game had more viewers than the men's final for the first time ever. All this week on KGW, we're highlighting several speakers for this year's TEDx Portland. It's happening Saturday at the Keller Auditorium. Today, it's Lou Featherstone. As China Green shows us, she's leading an empowering movement. This mission has become my life's work. Lou Featherstone, a.k.a. Lou in Lou Land. Podcaster, motivational speaker, but she calls herself a... Accidental middle-aged influencer. It was here and during COVID where everything started. Portland changed my life. She lived in Portland for eight years with her son and husband. After separating from her husband... She brought the world into what she was going through, something that resonated with many women. As I came into my power and found a confidence in middle age, started to share my journey with people online, and women just started coming to, to my page. Inspired by women reaching out to her on Instagram, she says she needed to meet them, connect with them, be there for them. She crowdfunded an old motorhome she calls Susie, named after her mom who recently passed. I um, traveled 6,000 miles in 28 states. Preaching women's rights, self-love, and facing your fears. And stopping living by the rule book that society has given us, particularly as women, that we have to be good girls and we have to behave ourselves. And, and I like having conversations that other people are afraid to have. One of those conversations will be on stage at TEDx Portland this Saturday. It's going to be very emotional for me coming back to do the talk in Portland. It's a very full um, circle for me to, to be coming back. This opportunity is incredibly important and a powerful stage for me to share my mission to empower other women. For KGW News, I'm China Green. Love her empowering message. Well, tickets are still available for Saturday's event. Just go to TEDxPortland.com. Well, that's all the time we have. Thanks for taking a little time for the good stuff. We leave you with some more beautiful pictures of nature that you all shared with us. Have a great evening.